Hey Five Knuckle fans, just got out of my advanced screening of Free Fire, and it was pretty good. It's one of the better films I've seen this year, and after some pretty meh films in a row, it's refreshing to see something this good, in an indie flick no less. So the story is, a group of strangers get together in order to purchase a large supply of guns, but while some of the strangers have beef with each other, and while the others try to screw the other over, Tensions rise until the guns get pulled out and everybody starts firing at each other to the point where sometimes they forget who's been shot by who. <clears throat> this movie in many ways is inspired by the movie Reservoir Dogs, almost to a fault, but I'll get to that more in the spoiler section. Though, to be fair, that movie itself also took some liberties from City on Fire, which, yeah, look that up. Brie Larson plays a sort of fish-out-of-water-esque uh, to these group of strangers, not really knowing anyone and mostly being an outsider drawn into the craziness that's going on. Cillian Murphy and Michael Smiley are the ones purchasing the guns, I forget why, and they're pretty much partners that keep each other in check and look out for each other, so much so that Cillian Murphy is able to tell what sort of guns they're being sold and how they're not the ones he asked for. And the man selling them the guns is played by Charlotte Joel Copley, who's this sort of, um... He's kind of like if a used car salesman became a gun dealer, and that's pretty much his personality. He's inept at shooting a gun, and he's mostly comic relief in this one, and he's... It's pretty funny. There's one scene involving a grease fire that gets a pretty funny reaction out of him. We have a man by the name of Army Hammer who plays this straight-faced American guy in all of this violence. He's great. He gives such dead band delivery and is one of the most rational people in the movie. It's... He was one of my favorites in this movie, definitely. Then we have Jack Rayner, whose 17-year-old cousin got hit in the face with a bottle by another character, played by Sam Riley, who is called Stebo, this crazy drug addict who kind of sort of is the reason why this whole standoff began due to the conflict with cousin guy. And yeah, tensions rise between the two, and that's what eventually leads to the gun standoff. The rising tensions before were mostly build up to them already not trusting each other. So now we have two groups of people pointing guns at each other and a mysterious third one looming around the corner, working within the shadows. So yeah, in terms of how this is similar to Reservoir Dogs, it's similar in setup to where it takes place almost entirely in one location. Uh, all the characters are dropping F-bombs all the time. They end up pointing guns at each other all the time. They end up shooting each other a lot. A lot more than in Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, they they take more than a few bullets before they're... Actually, hell, they take multiple bullets and are still able to walk and move around. Unlike freaking Mr. Orange. One bullet. Boom. And without giving too much away, there is also a character in it who is playing for a different side than you're led to believe. But whereas Reservoir Dogs um, focused heavily on its storytelling, this one mostly focuses on its visuals. The cinematography is what makes this movie, otherwise it wouldn't be as great as it is. Now while some of the characters are likable and get some laughs, some feel bland and you forget about them as soon as they die. Hell, even some of the characters that live near the end don't really have that strong of a personality. Some of them. For the most part, they are fairly well-defined, but it will bother you when you forget who's alive and who's dead, or even remember the characters that died. It pretty much goes as you'd expect, but with some twists and turns thrown in to help keep the narrative going without seeming too predictable or formulaic. It's a well-shot film, it's a well-acted film, and overall it kept me engaged throughout. Near the beginning it seemed a bit slow for me, but that was just mostly them establishing the characters, again, to no real effect, but they tried, guys, they tried. Overall, I would recommend this movie. It was a decent flick throughout. It's visually interesting, and it managed to keep me invested within the story, no matter how simplistic it is. Again, this, is, this takes place almost entirely in one location. 
Hell, it's more focused on this one location than in Reservoir Dogs. I know, I'll get off the comparisons, but even still, you know, it, you gotta connect the dots sometimes with these Hollywood movies. But hey, if you did like Reservoir Dogs, or you want to see just a decent visual spectacle and get some laughs out of it, check out Free Fire in theaters Friday. Alright, spoiler time, folks. Time to get into the spoilers of this flick. Okay, so back to the Reservoir Dogs comparison again. Uh, the one who... <clears throat> there is a person in this movie, um, it's Brie Larson's character, where she was secretly working all along to screw over everyone else. Like she was gonna take the money and go off with the other guys. But she did care about Cillian Murphy's character in the end. It didn't really want him to die. But she does put a bullet in, you know, pretty much all the remaining people. There's all, yeah, and there's also characters that get introduced. Now, the two hitmen that were working with Brie Larson, they're fine because they established that there's a third party operating within the group that is also their enemy. But the problem is, there's a character, I forget his name, but he works with Cillian Murphy and... And Michael Smiley. Now, he's a mute, he doesn't say anything, he shows up for about five minutes of the film, and is immediately killed, and like... And nothing happens, really, he just shows up to die. Which I thought was a little bit strange. Like, all the characters had a purpose except for him. Except for the mute guy who dies pretty hard in the movie. He's like beating the shit out of Jack Rayner and throwing him over a van. And then he, Jack Rayner grabs a crowbar and just kills the guy right then and there. Five minutes he shows up and it contributes nothing to the plot. I don't know, it just, it felt like a weak aspect to me. It could, there could have been more done with that. And in the end, I was kind of hoping Cillian Murphy and Army Hammer, who were supposedly the two remaining guys left, I was hoping they'd walk off because they were smart enough to know, you know what, let's just stop shooting each other, let's take this money, go to a bar, and then a hospital. Like, I wanted it to end like that, because they were my two favorite characters. Army Hammer, number one, because he was my favorite character in the movie, and... Cillian Murphy, because he's Cillian Murphy, one of my favorite actors. But nah, Brie Larson comes in at the last minute, revealing she's alive. Puts a bullet in Army Hammer's head, and puts a bullet in Cillian Murphy's stomach. And as she walks off with the money, police sirens show up, and it's pretty much implied that she gets caught. Again, like Mr. Pink and Reservoir Dogs. What I'm saying is this movie reminded me a lot of Reservoir Dogs. But you know, those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on social media and all that stuff. And as always, I don't know. I'm not going to I'm not going to do a catchphrase this time. Mm -hmm.